Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, we are talking about, well, what it says in the title of the video. What battleship line is right for you in 2023? So if you are a new player looking to pick up your first battleship to grind out, or if you are a returning player or a current player that's just trying to find the battleship that's right for the meta, you can probably find at least my suggestion to your question in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the battleship lines based on their general playstyle. I've broken the video up into three sections. We're going to talk about the brawling battleships, the mid-range battleships, and then the long-range battleships, the snipers, in each different section. So one of my things is that you can definitely say like this battleship or this line is currently great for the meta because yada 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 and while that might be true at the end of the day it's really up to what playstyle do you enjoy if you guys don't know who i am i have been playing this game for the better part of six years now and i love to brawl and I can still get it to work in 2023. Not as good as it used to be. I did a whole video on that yesterday. But I still like to brawl. And I still enjoy doing it. And there are quite a few lines that are very good at brawling even in today's meta. So it's up to you. What do you want to play? What do you, you want to do with your battleship? If you are a newer player, I would highly recommend just skipping to the mid-range section. Because that's... In my opinion, where most players should start out with a battleship that's better at mid-range. Why? We'll talk about that in that section. But what we're going to do is I'm going to go through each line, talk about their pros and their cons and how they're doing in 2023. We're also going to discuss things like the grind because grinding up to the tier 10 is, of course, a major part of playing through a line. And some are most definitely rougher than others. So before we get into it, if you guys do find yourself enjoying this video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Also make sure your notifications are turned on. I've got some messages over the past couple of days, some comments saying that viewers who've had their notifications turned on weren't getting notifications or they were turned off. So just double check that. YouTube likes to randomly turn that off from time to time, it seems. Also, if you're around Alameda this weekend, I will be attending CarrierCon. I was invited out there to the USS Hornet for their CarrierCon event, their pop culture convention. If you guys are around, you can see me IRL there. So come out and check it out if you are around Alameda and around the USS Hornet. All right. On to the ships, starting out with the first playstyle, which is brawling. Brawling, of course, involves being quite close to your target, getting your secondaries going, and getting in the enemy's face. It's a very fun playstyle in my mind, but unfortunately, realistically, and truthfully, has definitely been pushed out of the meta for the past couple of years. It doesn't happen near as much as it used to, especially at higher tier, but it can still happen, especially if you have the right ship. So let's start out with the German Battleship Mainline. First off, the German Battleship Mainline, while they can brawl, I would actually recommend you play them as a main battery build, building into the accuracy of your main battery guns, and taking the reload module when you can once you get to tier 9 and above, because at that point you have a very, very nice reload time on your main battery guns that compensates for their mediocre dispersion, and Preussen is quite the ship in the right situation. But anyway... What are these guys' pros? Well, they have amazing armor for brawling. They've got the wonderful German turtleback armor. The Citadel is nice and protected. You aren't going to be citadeling these ships from close range anytime soon. At medium and long range, though, that means that their armor is very chunky. So ships with larger caliber guns at your tier can definitely chunk away good parts of your HP if you aren't looking. The German battleships are also equipped with hydroacoustic search and catapult planes at higher tiers. I believe starting from tier 7 on up, no, tier 8 on up with Hydroacoustic Search, uh, tier 7, and uh, actually tier 6 on up with the Catapult Planes. They are equipped with German HE on their secondaries and the main battery guns, which has an improved pin ratio, which means that usually at your tier, your secondaries can pin the major threshold that's needed to 
do significant damage. For example, the grocer, I'm sorry, the Preussen used to be the grocer curve first. Her secondaries can all pin 32 millimeters of armor, which is the final major threshold in the game. So you don't have to worry about specking into IFHE for your secondaries to do what they need to do. Now, of course, if you're in something like the Bismarck that has a lot of 105s that can see ships with 32 millimeters of armor, you will need to spec into IFHE to get those guys pinning 32 millimeters of armor. Um, but, I mean, hey, once you do that, they can and they will pin what they need to pin and do a healthy amount of damage. These ships are also generally very maneuverable, especially from Tier 7 to Tier 8. Uh, the FDG can turn pretty decently well, but the Preussen, not so much. The Bismarck is where the maneuverability, the armor, and also concealment, in my opinion, are at their best for what it is. Uh, but, of course, because we can't have nice things, the gun accuracy in the Bismarck isn't that great. But if you build into, like I said, a main battery build and a concealment build, you can do some goofy things in Bismarck and uh, have essentially almost a cruiser-like battleship there. As far as I'm concerned, the grind up and down the German mainline is just fantastic. FDG used to be a rough spot, but they've given her a fair amount of buffs to where she's actually pretty decent in today's World of Warships. But again, these guys were designed for brawling. That doesn't really happen too much anymore. What I normally do, again, the main line, main battery build, go to the off-flank kite, which is where you run away from the enemy team and you try to get them to chase you and just beat them down with your main battery guns with their very quick reload time. The German battle cruisers, which uh, they are, well, some of the best brawlers in today's World of Warships, with Schlieffen being my opinion, the best brawler in today's game, um, which hurts me to say because I've always considered GK to be that, but I mean, Schlieffen is just insane. German Battlecruiser line, as far as the grind goes, up and down, I actually enjoyed it, again, all the way through, just like the main line. There's not really a low point in the line for me. Zeton looks stupid with its Star Destroyer superstructure, but it's, it's just goofy fun all the way up and down. The line. Now, since they are battle cruisers, their armor isn't as great. They can get overmatched through their nose by the common battleship calibers that you can find at their tier. Uh, once you do get to higher tier, though, they do start to have some icebreaker bows, like the Schlieffen does have a nice 60mm wraparound icebreaker, but you can still punch her in her upper nose and it'll go straight through. As far as the secondaries go, you get a ton of them. A ton, a ton of secondaries per side. But they are, again, mostly 105s when you get to upper tier, so you do need to spec into IFHE to get them pinning 32. They, however, do make up for it with just the sheer amount of volume that you will be spewing out, especially once you get to tier 9. They're absolutely goofy. Uh, these battleships, I'm sorry, battle cruisers also have torpedoes. Uh, long range, very slow torpedoes that are very useful for just throwing them in the general direction of whatever you don't want to be coming towards you. They also have fast damage con, which cools down incredibly fast, but there's a limited number of, so you have to be very careful with that. And they do have one less heal than the uh, normal battleships do have, because again, they are battle cruisers. They are also equipped with, uh, with um, Hydroacoustic Search, which is great for avoiding torpedoes, and they're generally very fast and very maneuverable because, again, they are battle cruisers. Uh, we're going to really knock these out of the park, in my opinion. Uh, these guys are what's keeping Brawling alive in today's World of Warships because they're so, so darn good at it. You do have to mind yourself, though, because they don't have the great armor of the mainline. Because, again, they're battle cruisers, but they're fast, maneuverable, and tons of fun, in my opinion. Would I recommend these lines, uh, this line to a newer player? I, I wouldn't, because they are they, they are way less survivable than your average battleship. But maybe as a second or third line to go down, absolutely. Speaking of battle cruisers... Sorry, not battle cruisers. But speaking of, of uh, lines that are pretty new player friendly, the Soviet battleships. Now, the Soviet battleships... These guys are something, all right? So when the Soviet battleships came out, they were considered to be some of the most busted ships in the game, especially the Kremlin, but she's been nerfed into the dirt pretty hard since then. The Soviet battleships are made to do Soviet things. They play just like every single large Soviet ship in the game, which is point your bow toward the enemy, find an island or rock to sit next to, and just tank for days. And they do that exceptionally well. They have great armor from an angled-in bow perspective. 
a, a bow and Soviet battleship is going to take time to deal because you got to either burn him down, try to flank him, and citadel him in his, in his sides. Other than that, if they're paying attention, it's going to be a long day. Unless you can, you know, find like some DD or submarine to just shove a bunch of torpedoes into their side. But other than that, they are exceptionally tanky ships. They also have the Soviet battleship dispersion gimmick, where the closer you are to the target, the better your dispersion is. So they're also, again, very much encouraged to play closer. They do have large guns for their tier, typically, and they do, of course, have Soviet bias AP with very flat, uh, uh, very flat arcs, and the AP hits incredibly hard when it does connect. They do also actually have pretty good AA. Kremlin's AA kept getting nerfed for some reason, well, in terms of its survivability, for some time, for whatever reason. As far as the grind goes for the Soviet battleships. It's a pretty good grind up and down. Synop's probably the highlight of the line because it's just such a goofy ship at tier 7. It's incredibly tanky. You have 16 inch guns. You have 9 16 inch guns at tier 7, which is kind of crazy. And it is just all around. It looks really cool too. It's one of my favorite looking ships in the game. But it's a really solid ship and probably the highlight of the Soviet battleship line. Kremlin used to be this monster that couldn't be tamed or killed, but again, she's been nerfed pretty hard. They do also have the fast damage con, the same one that the German battlecruisers get. So a very quick cooldown time, but a limited number of charges of that. You can also put Kusazov on the Soviet battleships, which he has a will to victory talent, well, where when you get down to the last 10% of your HP, you get a free heal and damage con as well. It's a very new player friendly line and it will teach you not to show your broadside pretty quickly because these ships do typically have large citadels that are very much exposed. If you catch their flat broadside, it's not really that difficult to citadel them. Uh, the Kremlin does sit a little low in the water though, so that's what makes her kind of difficult to citadel. But from close range, if you get to her side, it's a dead ship. Alright, moving on to the mid-range battleships. So, the mid-range battleships are battleships that are best played from about 14-ish kilometers to 17-ish kilometers out. They can push in. They're typically pretty decent at pushing in, but they're not that great much further past those 17, 18, 19 kilometers. That's getting to the sniping battleship range. So, let's start off the mid-range group by talking about the Italians. So... The Italian battleships are honestly one of the roughest lines to grind up, especially in 2023. The mid-tier is absolutely a slog. From tier 5 to tier 7, I am sorry if you're stuck in this grind, especially in today's meta, where so many players like to sit so far back. The guns are not accurate. They are incredibly frustrating to use because... They had to balance them for sap. The Italian battleships have sap shells. Uh, sap is basically, I mean, uh, TLDR, it's HE that doesn't have a fire chance but has a crazy high alpha. That's what it is. So when you hit to the less armored portion of enemy ships, you do a lot of damage. Like uh, the superstructures, the extremities, so the bow and the stern. You do a crazy amount of damage. In order to balance for that, they had to give the Italian battleships either a longer reload time or less accurate guns. And at mid-tier, the answer was less accurate guns, and it is incredibly frustrating to get through. Now, they do have the exhaust smoke generator, where you can pop it, and it'll emit a smoke screen around you as fast as you are going. That does definitely help with uh, either pushing or cutting away or running away if you're in a bad situation. Uh, I mostly use it to dip out of a situation that is not favorable to me, but... If someone's not paying attention, you'd be surprised how many players, by the way, don't realize there's a battleship-sized smokescreen walking toward them at 32 knots. So you can use it to push in as well and strike those unsuspecting ships. Again, you'd be surprised how often it does actually work. Now, they typically have smaller caliber guns for their tier. Uh, the Colombo has 15-inch guns, but she does have 16 15-inch guns, so that kind of helps make a, uh, makes up for it. And truth be told, this line doesn't really get good to the tier 9, because that's when you start getting a ridiculous number of guns for your tier. Before that, it's typically a standard number of guns, or maybe slightly more guns for, your, for their tier, with poor accuracy and 
it's a slog to get through. I re wouldn't really recommend the Italians for a newer player. I, I wouldn't even put them as a priority to grind. The Columbo, however, is really good in my opinion. Her rear turret's 360 with the overwhelming number of guns. She can bring the pain. But, I mean, God, the grind to get there and just how today's game goes, it's not a priority, in my mind at least. I I'm not hating on them. I do like them. It's just, it's a miserable gl grind, and in my opinion, the worst battleship grind in the game. So moving on, we have the U U.S. battleships, the first of three frickin' lines, because Wargaming really likes to make American battleships for some reason. I'm an American, and I, 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 even I'm here like, three? Really? <laughs> So the mainline U.S. battleships are fantastic. They are, in my opinion, the best line for a newer player to start out with, even in today's World of Warships. And the U.S. battleship line, the mainline, is the oldest battleship line in the game, tied with the Japanese battleship line. And it's a testament to how they were designed back in the day that they are still among the best line in the game. Uh, the grind is... Is I until you get to Colorado. New Mexico and Colorado is a little shaky. New Mexico is kind of... Uh, it's okay. Colorado is pretty miserable, which is the Tier 7. Because while you're still stuck in a Super Dreadnought, all the other nations are getting their fast battleships, and you're stuck in a Dreadnought that goes 20 knots. Which means you have to be very attentive to your situation and know when to run away. Actually, you have to, you have to run away before you need to run away because of how slow you are. But you do have 16 inch guns at tier 7, so that does kind of help make up for it. But the rest of the line is great, especially once you get to tier 8 to the North Carolina. The 8, 9, and 10 are fantastic battleships. So, the American battleships typically have uh, from... Yeah, m m most of the line, larger guns for their tier, until you get to tier 8, then you peter out at the 16-inch guns. But you do also get the Mark 8 Super Heavy AP, which means that your 16-inch guns really hit like 17-inch guns or 18-inch guns. They pack that much of a punch. Now, obviously, you can't overmatch the same armor that an 18-inch gun can, but when you do get those shells that bite, oh man, is it glorious. Now, the American battleships, because they use a super heavy shell, they do have a slower velocity on their shells than other battleships, which means that aiming at range is a lot, which is why these guys are best played at medium range. From like 13, 14, 15, 16 kilometers out, you're good. 17, 18, 19, oh man, the shells and the air drag and how slow they go, it really starts to show. So they're best played from, again, about 16, 15 kilometers in. Uh, once you get to the North Carolina, you are in the fast battleships. So the North Carolina and the Iowa are... Well, the Iowa's actually the fastest in the line, but they're both pretty darn fast. Both have 9, 15, uh, 16 inch guns. Now once you get the Iowa, you do get the 50 caliber gun, so you have the gun with, with the longer barrel, so the velocity is a lot better than that of the North Carolina. Uh, and when you get to the Montana, you get 12 of these 16 inch guns, which is great. Plus the American Battleship Dispersion is among the most consistent in the game, so once you get a good feel for that dispersion down, you can really just do whatever you want with the shells as long as you have a good feel for that dispersion. They also get an improved heal from tier 7 on up. It's not quite super heal, but it does regen back a fair amount of your HP. And they do typically have better than average AA. Used to be great AA, but those days have come and gone. And this line, great starter line in my opinion. The armor is good, but not like idiot proof. If you show your side, you will get clapped in these ships especially in the North Carolina, so that teaches you to watch your side, to pay attention, and teaches you really well how to aim because you get really good at leading shots in the American battleships. Up next, we have the second American battleship line, the hybrid line, which, well, take what I just said here, throw a flight deck on it. <laughs> uh, the, Amer the American hybrid line is coming up pretty soon, but now they have flight decks because we, we got to do that now for some reason. Uh, the dive bombers on the hybrids are kind of stupid and cracked out. They have a lower amount of guns than their 
mainline counterparts, but they do all have 16-inch guns and similar shell characteristics and such. You do have a giant flight deck welded onto the back of your ship, though, so that's going to get farmed pretty easily. I wouldn't really recommend this for a newer player at all because it is a hybrid. you got that giant flight deck on the back. Okay, leaving that line that I don't really enjoy, we have the British battleships. Now, the British battleships, these guys are something, all right? So the British battleships, they have amazing HE. It's really weird because when these guys came out, the British were not known for having HE because we had the British cruiser line that literally didn't have HE back in the day, but the battleships come out and they have god-tier HE. So the British BBHE has amazing alpha and great fire starting chance of, for their tier, all the way up to the tier 10, which means that, yeah, you will be spamming HE a bit in this line. Now, should you just keep HE loaded? Absolutely not, because the AP on these ships is also really good as well. It's short fuse AP, which means that the fuse timer is set much slower than other battleship lines, which means you get less overpins on things like cruisers and the superstructure battleships and their extremities. So, do use AP if something shows you broadside. The bonus to the HE is that if either your shells just aren't connecting or if something's bowing to you, load the HE and you'll burn them down. Now, this does also mean that they're pretty decent for dealing with DDs, although, of course, there's still a bit of a pullback on the amount of HE dams that a BB shell does to DDs because, well, we can't have nice things and just be able to clap DDs out of existence now, can we? But anyway, on top of that, the line has mediocre armor once you start to get to the modern battleships, especially when you get to the the Conqueror and the Lion, they're all coated in 32 millimeters of armor with exposed citadels. But once you start getting to the Lion and the Conqueror, the Tier 9 and the Tier 10 respectively, you do get a super heal that allows you to simply reprint a third of your, uh, two thirds of your ship's HP because why freaking not? This is countered by the fact that your citadel is exposed and again you do have lots of 32 millimeters of armor everywhere that most cruisers and battleship sectors at tier 10 can simply rip through their main battery guns also aren't that accurate especially once you get to again the lion and the conqueror and that's that that's why you might want to be throwing hg at longer ish ranges and why you can't really play the whole line at maximum range because you're really not going to be hitting too much at those tiers and the guns do cap out at 16 inch once you get to the lion uh, overall it's a very new player friendly line because of that super heal and because of the fact that you can just slap one in as long as you play it somewhat correctly you will be you will be doing damage you'll be doing lots of damage but you're kind of just he farming at that point but, I mean, I can't lie, it is pretty new player friendly. Would I recommend this be the first lineup? No, I still think the Americans were a good first choice. But a second lineup for a newer player? Yeah, definitely. They definitely do well in the current meta because, again, you can just slap one and farm HE damage and come near the top of the team just because you did a bunch of fire damage to enemy ships. So, yeah, if you're having a bad day in 2023, it's not the worst line to take out ever. All right. Speaking of the British, we have the British Battle Cruisers. Now, the British Battle Cruisers are a nice blend of the battleships and the characteristics of battle cruisers. So, they maintain similar HE to the battleship line with a little bit less fire chance and a little bit less alpha. However, for some reason, even though they're the battle cruisers, not the battleships, they have bigger guns than the main line. You can get to up to the St. Vincent with her 18-inch gun, 457mm 18-inch gun. Nine of them as well, because why not? The British battle cruisers are also pretty darn goofy. Um, like with the Germans, I think they knocked it out of the park here with the with the design of the line there's no real low point in the line in my opinion oh by the way the british battleship line the low point would be the monarch if you ask most players i don't necessarily agree with that i think the monarch's a pretty decent battleship line can be frustrating at times for me but that's what most people say versus what i say but anyway back to the battle cruisers uh they, they're pretty great through and through i really enjoyed the uh the ships all the way up from mid-tier to high tier they're fast maneuverable they get to these 
uh, turning mechanics in the torpedoes where you can uh, have your torpedo tubes there in the hull, select an angle, they launch out of the, hull, the uh, torpedo tube in the hull, and then they turn to the angle that you selected. And the torpedoes typically have high alpha, like the St. Vincent's torpedoes that have a th over 30,000 alpha, but you only get two of them in your bow. They also are equipped with specialized repair teams, once you start getting up to the higher tier ones. Uh, they're great at just running around at mid-range, like cruisers, they have speed boost. I pop the speed boost, run around at, again, 14, 15, 16 kilometers, and just burn down the world with the HE. And when it's time to push, I load in the AP, and I push into the enemy team uh, once it is that appropriate time. But at the same time, if that time never comes, you can also just keep running around with HE, burning the world down. Uh, definitely, once you get to the St. Vincent and the higher tiers, ships don't neglect the AP. The AP is really good. Uh, even the Hawk has great AP because it has larger guns at its tier. Again, something shows you broadside, load the AP, clap them with it, go on about your day, driving around like a cracked out squirrel at the at the uh, mid range on the map. So again, a line that I think is doing quite well in today's World of Warships, and a line I would recommend grinding up. And then we have the French BBs, the baguettes. The French battleship line is uh, it's just a confusing line. You look at the progression of the ships, it's like how how did we go from the Alsace to the Republic, that's just one example, but whatever. The French battleships typically have medium-sized guns at their tier, but a larger-ish number until you get to the Republic to where she has a small number of medium-sized guns. I, yeah, it's a big graph speed. I don't know what was going on here in their mind, but it's what we got. These guys are a lot of fun. Uh, the dispersion can be frustrating. One of the lower po part uh, points of the line is the Richelieu because of that, despite it being a real steel ship. It's very frustrating at times with the dispersion. The French AP is really good. It's high velocity. It hits like 16 or 17 inch AP rather than 15 inch AP because of its velocity, and that will lead to a lot of overpins too. And with the French battleships, that's a point of frustration because it's like you finally actually connect a shell on a target, and because of how good the pins are, it goes right through it, and you get a bunch of overpins. That's really frustrating to deal with. Uh, the Alsace is probably the high point in the line for me because you get 12 15 inch guns and you get all the goodies that the french battleships get they get a speed boost they get um the good ap and a pretty decent bit of man maneuverability there as well now the french battleships especially if you look at the richelieu don't play them like bow tankers they're not their armor is coated in 32 millimeters so they're super easy to farm down but if you keep on the move, find a flank, run down it, find the enemy ships that aren't paying attention, throw your AP into their sides, you have a fantastic time. And because of the Alsace's high number of guns, you can throw HE in the tubes and farm that down if you need to do that. And you can do that with a fair amount of other ships in the, in the line too, like the Leon. Uh, again, it's really weird how we go from a high number of guns then to the Richelieu with a small number of guns, then back to the... Um, all sauce with a high number of guns than to the Republic with a low number of guns. I really like Republic. I really do. She's a really big Graf B. She has 17 and a half inch guns that reload in 20 seconds with the reload module. She has a speed boost. Again, run down a flank with the all sauce, find the broadside to the enemy ships, load AP, blap them to hell. I don't know. It's just a very weird line, a line that I wouldn't recommend newer players go down, uh, but a line I, I would definitely recommend grinding to at some point, but not a super high priority in my mind. And on to our third category, the long range boys, the snipers. So first up, we have the American Faddleships. Because, why not? Even though Wargaming tried to gear these guys to be more of a mid-range uh, group of ships, they're still pretty much p p played at long range. You have a large number of decent sized guns for your tier until you get to the Vermont where you get a large number of large guns for your tier with 457 millimeter guns. That's a lot of pain that you're throwing down range. Uh, she does have a 40 second reload for her troubles so mm, yeah. So they have a couple of the same benefits that the American ba mainline battleships have in that they have the improved heal. But these guys are slow, 20 knot maximum speed because they're so fat, they're huge ships, getting longer reload time on the guns, they can be very frustrating to play, uh, very boring to play in my opinion too, although they did 
improve some characteristics of them to make them a bit more comfortable to play at mid-range, which, again, sounds great on paper. There are some things that have improved, like the acceleration, but still, these ships are huge targets. They get farmed down just e so, so easily when they do actually push in that most of them still just sit in the back because of, how, again, how the games go uh, today. I wouldn't really recommend them for first time, first time grinders. Maybe if you just really like sniping, sure. But for your first go round out, not so much. If you do want a sniping line for your first go go round, the Japanese battleships are much better for you. The Japanese battleships are great. Like I mentioned with the American battleships, they're tied for being the oldest uh, branch in the game and the grind of the battle sh uh, Japanese battleships is pretty good in my mind the Congo is a great ship the Magi is a great ship Fuso is Fuso the Izumo which is the tier 9 like the FDG used to be terrible but she's been buffed quite a bit in the past few years to the point to where she's actually pretty enjoyable now so the Japanese battleships they're actually a mix of battle cruisers and battleships um, there's reason, reasons as to why that are, you know, historical reasons that we don't have time to get into in this video, but it makes sense if you know the history of the Japanese Navy, and I think that's a pretty cool thing, and like from mid-tier to tier 8, they have a very similar play style of you run around in the back with a large number of good caliber guns for your tier, throw them, throw them at the enemy, just, you know, throw your AP at their broadsides, and you do quite well. But then you get to the Izumo, and things slow down, because the Izumo's more of a super duper dreadnought, and the Yamato, which is the tier 10, is of course a, like a super mega dreadnought. And it's a very, very stark difference from how you play the rest of the line. But these are some of the best snipers in the game. Uh, the Japanese accuracy is... Uh, Japanese dispersion can be frustrating at times. Uh, the Yamato is a ship I would highly recommend you guys grind out the legendary module for, the unique upgrade, whatever they're called nowadays, because that gets your dispersion down even further. It does help cut back on the frustration of the Japanese dispersion pattern, which is just a mess. It has terrible uh, horizontal dispersion for, sorry, uh, vertical dispersion for whatever reason. So it can be really frustrating, but hey, I mean, you gotta balance 18.1 inch guns on the Yami somehow. And the Yami's guns can punch right through uh, 32 millimeters of armor, so you don't really need to worry about armor too, too much in the Yami, even in today's game. Uh, as far as their other characteristics, they have standard heal, standard damage con, nothing too gimmicky here because gimmicks weren't really too much of a thing when these ships were designed, so their dispersion can be infuriating at times. Large number of good caliber guns for their tier to you get to the Yami, which you get a well normal number of large caliber guns for her tier. The armor on them, again, depending upon what ship you're on at the moment, can be great, can be kind of mushy because again they are battle cruisers. But once you get to the Ismo and to the Yami, they're pretty tough. The Yami does have the Yami cheek, where she can get citadeled when she's even angled from uh, her right in between her number one and number two turret and then right um right below her number three turret from the stern because of her weird oct octagonal citadel so there is that but a great line and if you're wanting a good sniper line this is it uh the way i normally play the yam the is the Izumo is that I will sit further back at the beginning of the match and then i will slowly start to push in uh because they are slow ships, very slow to turn. Turrets take forever to turn too. Uh, and when you push in though, after having sat in the back for a good chunk of the match, you do have your health intact. So now the enemy team has to deal with a pretty much full health Yemi or Izumo pushing into them while they're all at medium health and you have giant guns to just, you know, show them your middle finger and remove their citadel, if you will. Oh, by the way, the Izumo does have 16 inch guns, not uh, 18 inch guns, just so you, you guys are aware of that. So guys, that's a quick run through of each of the battleship lines and my two cents on them, their characteristics and how they do in 2023. Try to keep this video under 35 minutes, looks like we've managed to do that. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, anything I forgot or anything that you guys feel needs to be added, let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday, I'm sorry, a wonderful Thursday, and a wonderful rest of your week. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.